All right, welcome to another video from the Chart Readers. Today we are gonna look at energy and oil. And in all honesty, I got oil a little wrong, not even a little, I got oil wrong on the last video. So we're gonna, we're gonna learn from my mistake and then we will obviously start looking at what the coming days will look like. But what are we gonna do? The same thing we always do, right? We're gonna look at the daily and the weekly. We're gonna use our five moving average lines, these horizontal support and resistance lines that I do manually draw. And then when we're done up here, we're gonna come down to the MACD and the RSI, our lower indicators. Again, 80% of the work is up here and like the last 20 is confirmation is down here, right? So the last time I made this video was on the 18th, okay? And we start with SCO because this is an, a short on oil, okay? If this does well, oil stocks will do bad. If this does bad, oil stocks will do good. So I like to look here first to just kind of give me an idea of what the landscape should look like. And on the 18th, when I made this last video, it just really seemed a lot more positive than obviously it ended up being, right? So we made a pretty good run up. We landed right on my line and made a pretty hard dive down. We then literally landed on my line made a pretty good rise up and actually filled most of that four day gap, right? I, in on this 18th, right, the reason I was wrong was I thought we were gonna come this high. I thought we were gonna come to 27.50, breaking the 20, and really kind of making our way to this line as well as the 200 ultimately, right? So I just saw it as breaking out of this channel and working on up. Clearly, it didn't happen because we just couldn't get over the 20, right? And from there, really the last five days especially, I've been nothing but trading under the eight, right? So again, I got it wrong just because I thought breaking the 20 was gonna be a lot, I guess, easier. There's really no other word for it, right? And this is why I do talk about waiting for confirmation, right? It would have been better to say, let's wait for this day and you know, make sure, right, versus, kind of assuming and, you know, obviously eating the bad side of it, right? So you can call it a combination of greed. You can call it a combination of like over assumptions. But yeah, I definitely assumed it was going to go up. I got it wrong. And hey, the important part is just making sure you're aware of that, learning from it and all that sort of, you know, <laughs> all that sort of nonsense. But it's not nonsense. It's true, right? So again, just talking immediately, we're five days under the eight. We've now lost 100 and really more than anything, we, we have lost a cluster, right? Um, if you look at SEO just in general, there was cluster here, looked like it broke the cluster up, failed, kind of came back into the cluster and is now working on dropping back down, right? So um, ultimately it looks like we've lost this. It looks like we're gonna be working our way down and it looks like oil stocks might be doing well as a result of this, right? Um, let's take a look at the weekly real quick. Again, overall, just you can see how horizontal this thing has been trading over weeks, right? Which means this right here is five daily candles. This right here is five daily candles, right? So this many days has just been so, so horizontal. Ultimately, I think this is gonna be the important line. If it loses 271, you know, it's gonna come down to this 20, hey, maybe even 18 range if it's somewhere in this wick, I imagine that was somewhere from the daily, right? It might bounce from this 22 and kind of work its way back either within this larger channel or try to make its way up again. But ultimately it is looking negative for this. It looks like it should keep going down and then positive for oil stocks. But again, this RSI is somewhat seeming positive. I don't know if it's gonna to wanna to start going up, which generally means this will go up, right? The MACD is saying almost the opposite, right? It's almost saying the green line wants to keep going down, right? We like a green over red. So a little bit of a mixed signal as well, and, and don't take that for granted, right? If you're looking at your indicators and you can't get a firm yes or no, hey, that might mean just stay on the sidelines and wait, right? Overall, one more time, it should be positive for, for oil, especially after getting my thing wrong, right? And failing on the 20. Um, but nonetheless, it's not really screaming, screaming positivity. So Oxy, again, this was one I definitely got wrong, right? Because on the 18th, and it's funny, we were actually trading over the eight, 
right? But I still thought pessimistic things, right? So you look back a little bit, and it's kind of funny, right? There, I, I went against my rules, right? But we've been well over the eight for a number of days, right? And we love it. We love trading a stock, number one, that's over the eight. Number two, that's riding up on the eight, right? Um, this looks like a little bit of a bad day. It's obviously not a monster percent loss by any means, right? And look, we're still at least over the, the yesterday's full candle. We're still over the eight. I would pretty much just get a little worried if we lost 71.50, basically the open of yesterday, right? Um, hopefully though, it keeps going up, it keeps staying up with the eight. And remember, we haven't even come back down to touch the eight and then bounce back up, right? So the eight, as much as it is a ride up, it is also a bounce point, right? So um, yeah, overall, again, with the way Oxy was looking, this does seem a little positive, right? There was definitely a cluster, looked like it lost, did the exact opposite, came back in and obviously did the opposite of SCO and went up, right? But again, it's just still a little shaky because we've got green over red here, but red over green here. Um, 50 by no means is a bad number. It's not overbought or oversold yet, but um, it would have been nice to go up. I'm at least happy to see that, you know, there was a three day struggle with this line and then ultimately it did break it up. Um, but again, though, it just, it seems a little less definitive than ideal when you're swing trading. I'll tell you, you definitely want more definitive than, than, um, up in the air, right? Cause a swing trader might not have his or her finger on the mouse all day, right? If you're day trading, it might be a little different, um, way of looking at it. But honestly, I'd feel a little uncomfortable putting in new money into this even though we're still over the eight even though seo didn't look well just because again it's not super super definitive right um obviously if we can get over this what line is this 7764 is what i thought it said yeah 7764 that's gonna be some good trading up um there's a couple places this might end right just kind of using the top of this the top of this, even maybe that line right there because it hits the top and bottom of that roughly. Um, and you can see that actually might have been what it was today. So um, yeah, just overall, I'm not like, the daily looks good. Again, trust me, I, I feel like I'm, I'm saying the opposite of a lot of my rules, but yeah, it just seems a little, but see, this is a great weekly, right? We're, we're two, three weeks over the green, four weeks actually as well, because this one, this one, this one, this one. Um, what number is this? 73.64. Yeah, I mean, I, I think this might have been a, a, a pretty important wall. I don't know if that's what hit today or not, but oh man, I'm just, this is also why it's important to have other indicators and stuff like that. I would, I would need more info. I hate that I'm not as definitive. <clears throat> and I think I'm a little hesitant because I got last week's wrong too. But hey, you at least heard my thoughts. Again, I hope it's it's valuable, right? So Oh man, Indo, look at this. So we've talked about that 100 moving average, right? And I mean, it's so magnified right here. Looked like it was gonna break, looked like it was gonna fail, looked like it was gonna break, actually got another day over. And then just a really hard, really hard 7% loss actually. That's not a good RSI, do not like seeing that at all. And yeah, just I can't believe the 50 this time was ultimately what shut us down. But I've said it, if we can get over the 100, which hasn't happened in a long time, this thing would do really well. And make sure you wait for good confirmation on the 100 break, right? So um, yeah, really sad to see, honestly, this, this day to day was pretty devastating and might start to lead to the downtrend. And I think that goes back to Oxy. With Oxy looking good, Indo not looking good. Um, I know this one's a little more energy than it is necessarily oil related, right? But again, most of these first ones should be doing a little more, a little more unison of a move. And I just, I knew this one was bad today, and I think that's also what was shifting my Oxy thoughts as well. But um, yeah, really rough today. And again, you can still see the same cluster up here. It's not as loud, but getting over two lines on the weekly is not an easy thing. It's getting over two lines on the daily is not an easy thing, let alone on the weekly. You know what I mean? But yeah, just a really devastating day to what looked like it was going to be a cluster escape and run up. Right. So, um, 
Yeah, real rough here. Again, seemingly this does not look good unless we can at least get over the, look, we would really need to get over the 20. I would want to basically get as close to $7 tomorrow to even consider Indo still in play because after this day, it makes me seem like we're about to fall out of this um, cluster of moving averages versus what looked like we were about to fall, jump out of it, right? So really indecisive moving and, and oh man, that is a swing traders nightmare right there cei coming to cei look again just working on the eight right it seems like and look this thing's been struggling to get over the eight and i've been i've been i don't want to say shit talking this thing right but this thing's been struggling to get out of all-time lows and move up right you can see it just wanting to go up and go down Today was just not a great day, right? There was moments when it was this high. Even yesterday, there were moments when it was this high and ultimately it drops under both times, right? So um, I just don't like how we're seeing a lot more negative on these stocks than we should based on what SEO was doing, right? And um, obviously I got the week wrong, right? But I, I still... I think in the back of my head think SEO is going to do well and, and these oil stocks are going to do bad. So it's just, I think that's what's really ultimately happening in, in the back of my head, right? And again, I've said it a few times, when I move my money, I am using what I call the one. We're using chart readers, right? Which is this. And believe me, that's way better than a blank chart. Like, what does this even mean, right? This is the same CEI. It's obviously not a line chart, but I mean, you know, there are reasons why chart readers is way better than blank chart and why the one is better than chart readers. And ultimately, I would want more indicators to get more information and make a better decision here. But ultimately, hey, this hasn't even gotten over the eight, right? So at the bare minimum, get over the eight and hey, maybe we'll talk. Obviously, getting over the 20 is gonna be a lot better because hey, playing the 20 to the 50, I think is gonna be a way safer move than playing the eight to the 20. So um, yeah, let's look at the weekly real quick. Ugly weekly, that's all I gotta say right there, ugly weekly. So um, IMPP, this is the last one that I kind of put in this oil family. Um, again, look at this. So we have a cluster. It looks like it wants to break out of the cluster. Even here, it looked like it wanted to break out of the cluster but couldn't do it. And then again, just going to the 100, this thing's actually never been over the 100 on the daily. It actually did get over the 100 on this two-day window and then came back down, right? So again, does it want to run up all the way? Why did it hammer down so hard right there? I hate that the RSI doesn't look good. Um, man, I'm telling you, this. Th there's so much that looks like it should be good, but there's just this weird hesitation of it not being, right? So um, again, at this point, <clears throat> excuse me, getting over 44 cents is gonna be probably the safest thing to do. Um, Cause getting you over 44 will get you well over the 100, will get you over all of the green candles in this, and then ultimately should be starting this uptrend climb, right? So, but yeah, it's weird. Like again, cluster trading, cluster trading, cluster trading, looks like it's gonna go up at least a healthy bounce here. At least we didn't come all the way to the bottom. Um, I just, this is an ugly day of trading. It went from flying to just dropping, right? So um, still relatively better than yesterday. Um, but yeah, it's weird. I, I, I'm just, I'm a lot less definitive than I want to be, you know? And just the way that the, the earnings reports are coming out and things are happening, it, it's, a, it's a weird market to say the least. Um, UEC, it's funny, I've been banging the drum on safe trading once it breaks 420. Um, it actually made a pretty hard midday run the next day on what should have been the confirmation day, right? Um, it literally almost filled that channel gap in one trading day and then again, just kind of got hammered down, right? I hate these hammer down symbols, okay? I'm not someone that talks about shapes too much, but starting up here or getting here at some point and then just plummeting down is a really bad thing. You know what I mean? And then followed by another red candle behind it. That's not a good thing. I'm hoping this 420 line is strong enough, but um, yeah, it's just, 
I, I hate that I said break 420, you'll have a safe run. It looked like it wanted to do it and then it just kind of decided no, you know. Um, maybe the second run will do it. But again, even now I just kind of start looking at the RSI. I think I see green actually under. It looks like there's red on top and green down there, right? So, um, man, I just, I'm, I'm sorry I'm making such an inconsistent video, but... Um, you know, these are just really my honest thoughts based on this, right? And it goes back to, this is a really good intermediate stack. It's way better than a blind stack for lack of words, which is literally just price line, right? Um, but there are times when you need either more information, more indicators, other indicators, or just say, Hey, let me wait till the fog clears up. Right? So, um, yeah, UEC, this is actually a really good weekly chart, right? This right here is extreme uncertainty, right? We've talked about the doji where like, dude, this is literally a single line on the 420. It's gone as high as here and as low as here on one week span, right? So that screams inconsistent, but it at least stresses the importance of that 420 number I've been saying. It's just, it's not reacting the way it would have in a, in a better market, so... Um, yeah, I, I would really say try to find yourself some other indicators or just wait for the fog to clear out. Look, this was another one, Jivo. I really remembered making on the video saying, hey, Jivo had a shot at breaking the 20. It actually did what I would call a healthy bounce on the eight. Made it look like, because it broke the 20 this day, actually did break the 20 this day with a good run close to the 50 actually and then just boom today a seven percent six and a half whatever lose both lines right so man it's frustrating it is so um it's it, it's a crazy market it just it really is and this is the way people die a thousand die by a thousand cuts you know it's just these slow and stupid move. So there is something to say about just waiting for the fog to unsettle. It's just, let's be honest, we're all a little bit of a gambler, right? So I should, at least I know I am. Um, but yeah, Jivo, super set. I imagine LIACF might look something like this. We'll find out together right now. Yeah, I would say so. Cause again, I made the video, like I said, on the 18th, which was this one. Could, I got over the 20 that day, then didn't. Then it looked like it bounced on the eight. Then it looked like it lost it. Then it looked like it won. It's just, it's so up and down right now. And it's, it's really frustrating. And again, you can see it with the RSI. It's just, it's so tight. And when I think it's looking like it might want to break out and go up, it just actually decides to not, right? So um, yeah, it's frustrating. Believe me, I want to give you guys and gals a little more definitive thoughts, but um, truth is truth, right? And just sometimes... It's just not there. TMC I got right. So hopefully the few people that I really enjoy talking to the stock, I at least got this one right, geez. But again, we see it, it tried to break up. It definitely failed. I made the video on the 18th and it just seemed like it was gonna fall off of this cluster, right? And this seemed like a pretty bad example of losing a cluster and potentially having a lot lower to go, right? Um, next line is 85. Um, I thought it would have hit 85 and again, it, it still might though. So um, I got one right on the last video, so I'll take it. But again, this is some tr crazy trade. This is some crazy trading conditions. I couldn't say that well, but um, yeah, I hope you're at least still learning and enjoying the, the, the technical analysis aspect of these videos. There just does come points where Number one, there isn't enough technical analysis on this and you need more indicators. Number two, even with let's whatever the perfect, look, I'm not gonna pretend my the one is the perfect indicator chart, right? There have been multiple times when I've used the one and it still gets it wrong, right? For whatever reason, earnings news, hey, it just didn't close the way I thought, the volume dropped for whatever reason. But even if you have that perfect stack, there are other factors really like the ones I just stated off, right? That, that can make things happen. So don't give up on technical analysis, even though this was unfortunately a horrible week over a week video. But um, hey, I hope you're still learning and, and appreciating these. So um, have a great one.